And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, and with me, it is the return for the fir for the first time this year of the Big Dice Panel. Actually, I tell a lie. We did we did one a few months ago, so not a, not a 2021 first, but a first time in a, a first time in a while. And I ha I have with me with me in the temple one, two, three, four good brothers. Ha 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 ha. Coming to us, coming to us straight from the land of the Saga Machine, and who j and who just recently com who just recently um finished a Kickstarter on it on a further adventure with a further adventure within that within that particular universe, um Thor and Tabor. Eh. And we have the the man who is the man who is um the who is the furthest time zone time zone away from the, from the table, um. Developer of ins of Inspirals as well as um, in as well as its video game Inspirals Avarice. Um, Le Leo Blue Two yeah, Leo Blue yes. Two Days. Um, and the and the creator of the of of of, a, of an affair a little more Celtic with Legends of Avalon. Um, Darren Oatzirk. Hello, Oztark. I screwed it up again. Oztark. Nah, it's alright. You got it. I'll stick in the end. No. If I take if I take any solace, it's the fact that I'm prob I'm probably not the f I'm probably not the first person to make that mistake. No, you're not. It's all good. <laughs> and last but last but certainly not least, the biggest troublemaker at the table and the ma and the man with a thousand <laughs> bad jokes, um, <laughs> great greater of. Uh, of ne of necrobiotic and I, bl I believe you I believe you've got a adaptation of Chew coming up. Yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, that's the next project in October. Uh that one will have Daiso, so I feel like I'm cheating on everyone. Um <laughs> how dare you? I know, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not worthy. Should I leave? No. <laughs> no chicken no chickening. Oh, I get it. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want you you don't walk out of a mo you don't walk out of a movie early that you paid for, do you? Um, I think the movie, was, right? Yeah, I think there was one time I almost did. I don't know. Yeah, I almost did, but then still didn't. So I think the answer is no. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it. Does that count? No. no Damn it! it I thought about it very hard. <laughs> still, you can think you can think about it as hard as you like. Still doesn't count. <laughs> The only oh, and it. for what it's worth, the only time that I did was because um, a brownout happened. Kind of hard to watch a movie when there's a brownout. The uh, heck's a brownout? Like I know of a blackout. Like what? What? What, what was supposed to brown out? Basic, basically, basically a low, a lower key power out. Oh, I thought you um crapped your pants. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. that would also cause me to go home. Yeah, me too. No, yeah. no, that no, I no. Oh. <laughs> I uh, yeah. not familiar with the term. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I guess I, I guess I can add like, I guess in some I guess that's just the term that I that that I don't that I'd always hear I would always hear about and um that's the term I ended up using. Maybe it's me being a little bit too Minnesotan. Hmm. Um, Are you from Minnesota? Know. Yeah. Oh cool. My um wife studied at university there for obviously for university. So she... I've got to visit sometime apparently to experience the snow. Oh, um if you're doing that, dress in layers. Yeah, that's what I've been told. Yeah, <laughs> it's been, it's been, I'm I'm hoping that I'm hoping that she doesn't have you go go in there in like January or February because no, no, that's what she wants. Yeah, I don't know why she wants to kill me. I think. Um, I get the feeling it's uh, I get the feeling it's to it's um try, it's trying to give perspective about the yeah, gap so. between UK winters and um mid and Midwest Midwest US winters. Yeah, I think that's the intent. Anyway, oh. we haven't finished introducing our dear friend yet. Oh, oh yeah, and 
I, th I, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. All the all that whole blue because you distracted me and I get I didn't even get to your name, Mitch. <laughs> the, one only, the one only Mitchell Wallace. Like as if it's bad as if it's bad enough that I've got my brother Z my brother Zan who is dedicated to be the bane of my existence. I've got I've got to deal with you. I've got to deal with you on a on a regular basis, and I'm debating which is worse. Oh God, yeah. Uh, I work daily to uh, be a nuisance. So uh, yeah. <laughs> If I take if I take any solace, it's the it's the fact that I get the feeling you're as much of a nuisance to everybody else at Penny for a Tail than you that that you are with me. <laughs> I am. I I, uh, I I have a lot of sympathy for the others at Penny for a Tail. Uh, I am a chaotic mess, so uh, my love goes out to them. Yep. Oh. <clears throat> so, the theme this the theme this time around is card-based mechanics in RPGs, which is a little bit more of a esoteric um, theme for Big Dice Panel compared to some of the other times that this has been done. Um, but I wanted, I, wanted to de I wanted to delve into that simply because the idea of using cards instead of dice has always been fascinating to me ever since I first picked up um, Dragonlance 5th Age. Mm, yeah. Um, nice. So... What the first qu the first question that I'd li that I'd like to go I'd like to go about with you just to set the stage is I'd like you I'd like each of you to walk me through um the mo the moment when you get, when you all decided that your that your particular projects relevant to this were going to be using cards and if you had tooled around with using dice beforehand yeah so yeah. Uh, I'll I'll start with I'll um start with I'll start with you Thorin on on your on your take with, through that experience. Yeah, so uh I, you know, I've been making RPGs uh just as a hobby long before, you know, publishing anything for for years and years and played around with uh you know, a number of different ways of trying to do a base mechanic. Uh played around with like uh sets of D10s or uh uh, you know, played around with dice mechanics and dice pools and stuff like that, but I always kept coming back to, uh, you know, the card-based RPGs because uh, really that's really where I got my start, and uh, it, 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 always, it always just clicked very well with me. I like the, you know, the different sorts of things that cards can do that dice really don't do as well. Like, they can hold state in a way that dice just really can't. So uh, I thought it was a good fit for, you know, the project I was working on at the time, and it's, it's really just how my go-to. Um, what about you, Darren? Uh, yeah, it was actually a playtest for me. So I started with dice, um, D20s, mm -hmm. and then I started exploring like other crazy dice. Like I say crazy, but like D18s and D14s and things like that. And to, you know, I'm sure everyone goes through a little phase of that when they want to go through like the whole scale. It's like, oh, you have a D4, you have a D6, you have a D8, and you go up, that kind of thing, right? Uh, and then I was like, no, that's too silly. No one's going to do that. And then I was using D6, and I was playtesting the game for the second time um, with some players that had never played a role-playing game before. And uh, the game kind of has a big emphasis on teamwork, which means handing things to each other, giving each other, like, the... Uh, it's called the edge, uh, the edges that you get um, while you're playing. And we are playing with all these dice, and the players said, like, hey, we can't tell which dice we've rolled and which ones we're keeping, because they all look the same, right? And you're handing out all these things. How many dice do we need to play this game? And then one of the playtests has said, uh, "Have you thought about using cards because you can you can deal them out, or you can keep them face down for the ones you haven't used yet, and then reveal them later?" And I was like, oh, "I don't want to use cards. Nobody uses cards. Nobody likes cards. It seems like it's kind of maligned a little bit in the RPG community." But the the the, the game itself wanted it to go there. And I just kind of followed the feedback and tried it, and then it just worked so much better. It was exactly what I needed. Um, and then I, I delved straight in and then started working from there um, and never looked back. It's so much better because of it. So, yeah. And um, what about you? What about you, Leo? Because your your particular your particular angle is is Deck building. Going, is yeah. going be, um, a bit that is going to be a, is going to be is even more on the unorthodox side simply because of the deck building aspect. Yeah, well, I guess I found dice kind of impersonal, and I've had 
experiences where people always blame the dies. They always blamed um, that they didn't have enough control over how their games played. And I guess I went, hmm, I guess we should be thinking about doing something that gives the players more control, more decision-making, and reward them for actually building the character as well. So I guess that's where I started toying with the idea with deck building. And I had tried to to use parslings with dice, and it just didn't quite gel well enough. You know, it just felt like something was missing. And so I turned to cards, which had suits, values, um, number of cards on the deck. And that all changes how you experience the game. And I guess that's why I stuck with cards, because it felt more personal. Mm-hmm. And to to fur, to further, I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't if I didn't um if I didn't do the se- the second part with that, um, because of the fact that deck building is a is a big deal with parcelings, was there an early moment where you tried to do dice building, or was the de- was the deck building aspect something that came after deciding to do cards? Um, the deck building came with the choice of using cards. Um, and I don't think I ever tried dice building because I've always been an online player and in the online kind of sphere, it's harder for you as a GM to monitor or at least observe what's happening with the dice in real time. I mean, there are services like Roll20 and Table.Simulator Simulator and Astral Table, but it's still, it's still not quite the same feel. There's a tactile sensation that you get with using these things, and if you're dice building and you can't quite get all the information as a GM, it sometimes feels incomplete. Mm-hmm. Whereas with cards, you can sort of get a guesstimate of what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and for and for you, Mitch. Oh yeah, so uh, yeah, Necrobatic uh, in that same way is a, a deck building a TTRPG. Um, for uh, for me and the team, it, it was just kind of like uh, spoons, right? I, I love like looking at a day like spoons, and so having a mechanic that lets you look at what you could be successful within like the next couple of scenes, and and what you'd have to trade in order to be successful on the things that you want. I think just couldn't be replicated with dice. Um, cards just kind of made it a personal thing. And honestly, cards are, are more customizable, too. Uh, I mean, Gambit made it cool, so uh, I couldn't imagine him throwing dice. <laughs> and I guess you've also got custom um, deck backings as well, so everyone feels a little bit different when they bring in the decks of cards. Yeah, yeah. So it's like all, all these cool things you can do. And um, one thing I really wanted to do during conventions was have... Um, special scenarios played out where we'll have a uh, a particular card that you can add into your deck uh, that works with the, uh, you know, the custom Necrobiotic deck, uh, which just has, like, the custom backing. It's, it's no different from any other deck. Uh, but that you can add it into your deck to be, like, that super special card uh, with a special ability attached to it that you can bring uh, home to your game and be like, yeah, I have this special thing because I went to a con and I did this thing in the, in the universe. And, mm-hmm. you know, this is why I'm better than uh, everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. I've always I've always found it a bit a, a bit amusing that that there's that there's that stigma regarding you regarding using yeah. um regarding using cards or using a spe- using some sort of specialized um setup. Um large, and I've I've mentioned this to some of you in the past. There's a there's a bit of irony with the person who lamb lambasts a given a given game for using say custom dice. And yet, the, and yet, you look at what they're you look at what they're currently running or playing, and they're using Fate. <laughs> you know, a game that uses foot, a game that uses custom dice in the form of the fudge dice. Hmm. Well, I, I guess the difference is is that you can still use regular dice. It's just you have to reassign the numbers. Whereas with a custom deck, you you've got the barrier of actually having your players having to buy your specific deck of cards. <laughs> And that can be a turnoff because, like, what if you forget your cards? You can't go to a mate's house and say, "Hey, do you have a deck of um, a deck of X, Y, Z cards?" Yeah, that was so, uh, was it? Uh, Clockwork Dominion had a like a uh, a fully customized, almost like Legend of the Five Rings customized dice 
of a customized card set that they used for that. So you needed that card deck. Um, luckily, I think uh, all of ours just uses a, a all of ours uses a regular French deck, right? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Heck yeah, Flavor decks are really easy to come by. So yeah, I think they're more accessible than than dice. Though I think there's kind of yeah. a uh, I think a, an awkward wrong assumption in the TTRPG community that dice are more uh, accessible. But I feel like well, even a typical home has a deck of cards somewhere. Yeah, somewhere you know, probably in like mm-hmm. in a dusty basement or something. Yeah, but it's there, right? <laughs> I'd say yeah. I'd say the um, I'd say the only the only dice that I consider that I consider to be accessible in that regard are d sixes. Yeah, that's true. When once you get once you once you get into the not once you get into the non d six territory, that's that's when you've got to start um, looking up looking up specialists on on one on one degree or another. Um, of course, of course. I've already I've already done the meme about the um lo- about the lonely D twelve. <laughs> oh, I love the D twelve. <sighs> but and of and of course and of course the, and of course there's the there's the fact that with some with some games just having a handful of D sixes still isn't enough. Shadowrun. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, I also think that maybe dice collectors get a little bit out of hand. Have, like. I'm I'm guessing like everyone here has at least a jar of dice. Yeah. yeah. Um I actually I I am not a dice collector. They just like uh and I get like free dice from from different uh dice companies dice accumulator are... perhaps. No, yeah. I just I I give them away. Like I don't really like dice that much. Like I they usually treat me wrong in, in general, so I'm just like, you know what? Forget you guys. Um like, I, don't, I don't need you. I um I'll I'll say it I'll say in that front is that my roommate learned vi- learned the hard way to not underestimate me with a sufficient amount of four sided dice. <laughs> oh yeah, um, it sounds like a Lego story. Like, like you just scattered them across the floor. I, sc- I, sc- I scattered a I scattered a pound of white D fours on the uh, on the kitchen floor. Mm 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 mm. That's evil. My my kid does that sometimes, and that's evil. Well, he should he, <laughs> yeah. shouldn't, have eaten, he shouldn't have eaten my lunch. No, that's fair. Okay, what? Wait, what type of lunch was it? I had I had a stock I had a I had a small stock of Greek yogurt. Oh, not not Greek yogurt, Icelandic yogurt. Um, skier mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. I was gonna, that I was gonna be having throughout that week. Um, oh yeah, I'm gone for a day. He ends up going through the whole thing, and um and I'm like, I'm get I'm gonna get you for this. <laughs> it may not. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be a year from now. But you are going to get yours. Yeah. No, that's fair. You probably should have killed him. Um, I don't know. Yeah, well, I can only do that once. Yeah. Well, if you get caught, I mean, <laughs> I feel like TTRPGers. We've done enough internet searches to be kind of uh, <laughs> at least ahead of the curve from everyone else. I don't know. Um. Just a little bit, you know. Research your character here. Research your character there. Exactly. Now you're right. Now pipe bomb. Yeah, just, but even, even so, I can only do that one. I can only do, even even if whether I'm successful or not, I can only do it once. What what am I gonna do? Revive him and then do it twice? Yes, I mean necrobiotic, right? That's what we're trying to do. Oh, um, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, walked in, in I walked into the, I yeah. Walked into the room, but <laughs> the point the point is, I the point is, I pref- I prefer. Uh, but the point is, um, pain is pain is a constantly renewable resource. Um, is I guess we gotta tap into that somehow, right? Mm-hmm. Plus, haven't you? Didn't you ever? Didn't you ever see Wrath of Khan about the whole thing of the Klingon proverb that revenge is a dish best served cold? I'm in Minnesota. It's cold half the year. Oh yeah, yeah. Star Trek with the lightsabers and uh. What was okay, that? now like, you're just uh... fucking with me. <laughs> um, but speak, speaking of that, um, given given that given that particular stigma, I'm cu- I'm curious the re- the reaction that people that people have when they when they go t- when they go up to what you've got at say a con- at say a convention or a play test or, or the like, um, and see that you're using cards in- instead of dice. I'm curious about the re- the reaction between people who 
have some TRPG experience under their belt and people who mm. don't. I mean, I, I would say like Thorin's uh, Shadows uh, game uh, was the first card-based TTRPG I ever uh, played. Um, and it freaked me the heck out. Like, I couldn't figure out what to do with my cards, like, the first six sessions. And it was like... And it, it was like, I played Pathfinder, right? And Pathfinder's a hot mess. And I was like, I surely I can understand this. But for some reason, the, the kind of sidestep to the card system blew my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, but then after I got kind of past that, dear God, did I love it. Uh, and I, I fell in love, and then, like, Parslings, oh, God, yeah, I, I can't, like, playing that game was just so much fun, and it, it just, like, cards, cards are so cool, and I'm, I'm sad every time I have to make a, or write for a dice system game, um, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's my two cents. I honestly think that most of the players come away it's either they've never played D&D &D before, they've never played any other game system before, and they're like, yep, this makes sense. This makes so much sense. And then I've got people that have come from DMD, and I'm like, what the hell is happening? Why are there cards? What? I I, I want to roll something. And they panic a little. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I find that people that haven't played a lot of other TTRPGs really gel with it early on, and people that have played a lot of dice games, that's the only thing they've ever known. It just... You know, it's, it's just not what they're used to, and sometimes it takes a while. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of like if you ever tried to exclude perception from your TTRPG, they would flip. Like, <laughs> what do I do? What do I do to fill the awkward silence? Yeah. How do I get more information without, you know, asking the same yeah. question over and over again? Yeah, perception check! What's in this room? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, man. the thing I've found... Yeah, exactly what you guys said. It was um, My game was a little bit targeted towards new players that never played games before. And to them, it was just, they, they didn't know any better. So <laughs> it, was, it was all good for them. But during, I remember during the Kickstarter, I had a lot of people messaging me saying, hey, can you play it with dice instead? I'm just like, no, you can't. It's just not possible. <laughs> you, can't, you can't be done. Uh, that, well, can't you add like an extra rule in to make it so it does in the back rule or something like that? I said, no, sorry. Too much work, right? Yeah. 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 But no, it's not possible. It's just it doesn't. It's not compatible because the cards have things that the dice don't. I get the feeling it's not a case. It's not a case of, oh, 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 it, of if you if you were to do that, you would effectively have to make a completely a completely separate game, uh, a la um, a la Fate versus Fate Accelerated, and that and as as we as as historians have learned from World War Two, don't fight a war on two fronts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Damn right. I look, I Three think fronts at least. <laughs> I think every medium has its own perks. Like you can compare the feelings of different dice from mm -hmm. your standard D6 to the the dice from Hell, the D4. And then cards have their own flavor, whether you're using them as full deck or using them as par a partial deck. They feel different. There's this different sensation mm -hmm. and. You can't believe the, how many jokes I got about believing in the heart of the cards while playtesting with people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, um, I, be, I, be, I believe that. Com I believe that completely. Be um, and it's, it's not like it's not like I'm one to talk. Given that one of the mantras here in the temple is the dice gods show no mercy, which applies just as well to cards. Anything, anything involving R anything involving R and Jesus, um, mm -hmm. we can and can and will we can and will work against you. Um, as any as anyone who has ever suffered through XCOM's RNG will tell you. Oh God, I hate XCOM sometimes <sighs> so much. Even though I play all their stuff. Yeah. <sighs> um, but that. But um, the interesting the interesting thing about about doing about the choice to do a card system is um is the is the fact that. All roads have to lead to Rome. I'm pretty sure that there are some. I'm pretty sure that there are some games that try to mix cards and dice, but I. But that. But that is a. That is a very. Um, a very. A very. A very foolhardy thing to thing to do because. Um, you're because you're essentially you're essentially doing that whole segmented mechanics thing that. 
it pretty pretty much pretty much died out by the time the '90s rolled around. Um, and when you with with the decision to go with with decision to go with cards, were there were there some aspects that would have t would have been used by dice otherwise that were a bit trickier to manage at first? Well, usually dice is an easy random probability system, so you just roll yeah. a dice or initiative. You roll a dice or whatever, and I still use some dice in Parslings, but not much. It's just a helpful adjunct for the GM, I feel. That makes mm -hmm. everything a little bit snappier rather than having to make your... Well, at least in my game. Mm -hmm. um, make their own separate decks for each character. And, and, it's, and it's more to give it... <laughs> I didn't mean to call you foolhardy when I said that. Um, that's all right. Yeah, I was, I was it, it, my was, <laughs> it, it was always just the challenge because like with the deck building, Jig asked the GM to have 20 different decks for their 20 different NPCs. Um, that can get expensive real fast. I can tell you that. I've got like a big box of cards right now just next to me. Well, that well that and it can also and it can also be a mess when trying to keep all of those particular decks organized on a ta on a table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, in a sense, I, I think at least for me, for me, the decision was to use a little bit of dice just to make everyone's lives a bit easier. And honestly, the game is all about the players, right? Mm-hmm. It's all about their experience. So it doesn't. I, the GM is an important player, but you can almost behind the GM screen. You can sometimes either go with the rules hard and fast, or you can be a little bit more lenient to go with the flow to make sure that the story keeps going, that everything goes as smooth as possible. Mm -hmm. And dice just made it go smoother, you know, um, just in that small portion where they were managing multiple characters. All right, I get, I can, I can certainly get behind that. Um, now, when it comes now, <clears throat> what the I'd say one, I'd say one of, I'd say one of the big, one of the bigger, um, one of the big, one of the bigger issue, one of the bigger issues that co that comes along with dice, and one of the, th not with dice, but with cards, and one of the things that has to be taken into account is, you've got. Two, you've got two values that you're taking into account. Possibly, possibly three. The the card value itself, when, if you're dealing with numerics, the um, suit, and face cards. And for for my next question on on that front is, what is um. Were there is were there is when it comes to those th when it comes to those three aspects, were there were well, how easy or difficult was it to um to keep to make sure that the, to make sure that they were present or if they or if they needed to get dropped. I mean, personally, I think suits are great. They're they're basically like a second randomizer on your you know on a card flip basically, and there's oftentimes you you want. Two random numbers like attack and damage is a is a, is a pretty common, you know, pairing of random numbers there. Um, uh, or uh, success versus I don't know success level or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think they're great. I, I think face cards are sometimes a little more tricky because uh, I think at least when I see a face card, I expect something special. You know, mm -hmm. um, uh, it's just just maybe it's just like that's my gut instinct and maybe maybe other people have other gut instincts but you know you, you want it to do something you know something interesting well i definitely agree um face cards were a little bit of a challenge to implement the first time around um, when developing um the game just because they 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 seemed like they needed a special purpose as you said um yeah and the demand attention Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because, like, in most cards, they're illustrated differently. So it's not just, like, a, a blank um, suit or, a, a, like, it's not just a number of suits or whatever on there. It's, a, it's an actual picture, and uh, that means there's some kind of more um, greater importance to it, right? Mm -hmm. So I 100% agree. There's just, like, there's so many flavors that you get with all the different parts, and that means you can assign different mechanics and... The only problem with that is that it increases teaching time by just that little bit. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, what we did with uh, Necrobiotic was the face cards ended up being uh, representative of special abilities you put in your deck. Um, and so they had more of a purpose on uh, create, uh, customizing your character than a, uh, a special aspect to the cards themselves. Um, which kind of made it easier to communicate to people. Uh, though sometimes I still hear, like, you know, what does this do? It's still there. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoy it. And, like, uh, especially when you can uh, uh, translate uh, your your game to a tarot deck. Um, I'm a huge fan of, like, the Major Arcana and, like, all the different things it could be. Uh, I know Steve D., uh, who did Relic? relics? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, has like this re these really cool uh, tarot deck stuff in there, um, and, and I thought it was really cool. Man. Yeah, for me. me think oh, go on, sorry. Oh, you know you, you got you. I was gonna say for for me, um, when I switched from dice to cards, the 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 suits and the different colors of the cards was really beneficial to what I wanted to achieve in my game, or one of the things I wanted to achieve. Is that I want is the the results you got to be weighted around zero, so the average result that you would get would be zero, and then you'd be plus or minus from there, just so you could compare things easier. So if I have an attribute of one and you have an attribute of one, we know that I just have to beat your one, right? And the average roll will give you zero, which means you'll be matched. Um, and then when I went to cards, it was like, oh, well, that's great. I have red cards and I have black cards, and sometimes red will be good, and sometimes black will be good, and sometimes red will be bad, and sometimes black will be bad. And, and so the, the division between the two colors uh, then splits the deck between plus and negative, depending on what you're doing. And then you have the four suits, and, I'm, and they just aligned with my four attributes. And I was like, wow, why didn't it just kind of fit perfectly? And then the core cards ended up being the ones that give you the critical successes. So I ended up getting to use everything really nicely, and it worked out. And I was lucky as well that it worked out with the odds. I spent a lot of time. Actually, that's one thing for your question you mentioned earlier about difficulties between cards and dice. Um, I found it very difficult to kind of tweak the odds of what I wanted for the game. Like I wanted a, you know, the 60% uh, success rate and that kind of thing. And I want crits to happen like 10% uh, of the time in this situation and 30% later on. Figuring out how to make the game work around that for cards was a little bit more difficult than, than usual with dice, uh, I think. But in, in the end, we got there. Mm -hmm. um, as, oh, you go, sorry. <laughs> Well, what, what I was gonna, what I was gonna say is that is that the um, is that the crit part ma it makes things interesting since um, now I'm I am not I am not a statistician, but um, as I as I understand it, the odds of getting the odds of getting a face card on a fifty-two card deck is um, a ra is a ra is in the twenty-five percent range. Yeah, exactly. But then because the uh, cards are split between red cards and black cards, and say if you're doing a physical check, you want red cards. If you're doing a mental check, you want black cards. Then it cuts that in half down to twelve percent, mm -hmm. um, which is where I, I want it to be. Yeah, yeah. And I, I like how the, the statistics are, are are very widely different between uh, oh, the games yeah. represented in here, uh, just with <laughs> a deck of cards. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here's a quick question. Do you go? Oh, go on. You've been trying to say something for a while. Go, 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 yeah, go, go, no, go. I was actually going to ask how does everyone deal with crits in their systems? Because, like, like, again, there's different ways of dealing with it since we're actually very all fairly different games. Mm -hmm. um, like, I, at least for mine, it's all about getting all the cards of the same suit. So right. if you plan your deck well, you're more likely to get crits. But at mm -hmm. the same time, it's not an easy feat to do especially with a small deck because it's so easy to ruin the chance of that happening yeah we just but... don't have crits they made it very okay. easy uh, i i have a question for everyone do you use jokers yes 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 yeah. everyone uses jokers cool is that yeah. a joke yeah i know right <laughs> i was just i was just curious because you know it's, this is my first uh card based RPG, uh, rpg and i just wanted to it is see a, how it is a fair handle. It is a fair question to ask because, well, if you look at if you look at the way joke if you look at the way the Joker is the Joker is used in um, tra games. in traditional yeah. car in traditional card games, it's something that there isn't an analog for in a lot of um, in a lot of dice systems because it's basically mm -hmm. giving the giving the potential result to um, to the to the um, holder. I was I was about to say player, but in but 
in ter but in terms of like the kinds of poker where a joker might be used you can't really use that that um context um hmm. and there is and there isn't really a equivalent with that in um in di in a dice set in a dice setup it's hmm. it's always a, it's always a case of whatever you roll your whatever you roll you're going to be getting a you're going to be getting a result and nothing else yeah and actually this played into what i mentioned earlier as well about the odds being difficult to play with with cards because you have what you have and there's like i said there's four suits and you can't make five suits mm -hmm. um jokers originally weren't in the game for me uh, until later on and i realized i needed some extra juice for the the, the crit chances for characters and things like that and and then I remembered, oh, jokers exist. I can add two of those in, and it kind of fixed everything. I was like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, jokers. Um, ideally, when it comes to probability in um in a lot in a lot of di in a lot of dice based setups, um, I find I find that the that the more reliable me the more reliable baseline is that play is that players have s are in are in within the relative range of fifty fifty. Um, mm -hmm. sometimes sometimes it's sometimes it's sixty forty or vi or vice versa, but that's gen that's generally where where the ideal to, where the ideal shooting for should is um for a is for a lot of designers. Um, where would where where did you want to, where did you guys want to skew the um the at the um baseline probability since. Obvious, obviously, the D twenty system, for instance, has it as at the that the baseline probability is um, twenty five percent before mo before all the modifiers. Do you mean fifty five? I have no idea. I haven't played D anD D in so long, so I don't yeah. remember anything about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I know, like for D anD D, that that's like uh, it's. It I think it what yeah, what well, what you said, like um. Those percentages and stuff, but for like for Necrobiotic, I it, it, one of the cooler things is because it's a deck building game, they get to kind of uh, as they develop their character, uh, start messing with the uh, percentage yeah, chance right. of yeah the odds. Um, but you know, at its base, uh, I found it really difficult to try to, and you know, I, I really am not great at statistics at all. So, mm -hmm. really well, ask. since we moved on to deck builders, at least to start off with. Um, I I made the emphasis for all of my players when I do play is up to them to kind of decide their odds. So again, you build your deck, but you in a small deck that's less than 20, 30 cards, you can sort of start card counting the instant a card comes out. You know, you can tally down and, and do that you had. And if the players can choose whatever type of action they want to respond to something, that means if they're playing well, they should be succeeding most of the time. Um, and I think it's it's not cheating in my game to say, hey, 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 maybe take a look through your discard. You, you don't have any more diamonds, um, any more spades in your deck. Maybe don't do something that relates to spades, you know? So, okay. in a sense, I, I think I deal with failure a lot less, unless I'm being a very mean GM and not letting them reshuffle. Yeah, I feel for me at least it would vary a lot with the genre uh, the game is trying to uh, uh, trying to invoke and emulate. Like, uh, I, I I I would temp be tempted to make failure you know more common than a lot of other genres and say like survival horror, where you know over over overcoming and dealing with the consequences of those failures is like kind of kind of a big thing. Whereas if you're playing some sort of you know sort of like mythic big damn hero I, I would want them to succeed even on things they're not necessarily like super skilled in most of the time because it kind of comes with the territory in the genre I don't know. well thorin in, in this case you're in a unique position since you've d you've done you've done you've done around uh, i'd say four i'd say four different games under the saga machine and each of them is representative of a diff of a different um genre a different genre and thus a different playstyle. Shadows over Soul, obviously being being um, very um, ho um, space ho space horror. Um, Dime Adventures being very pulpy, and um, Against the Dark Yogi being, as you said, big damn heroes. Um, and all all of that's all of that's still within the same deck of cards. Um, 
so what how do you at so in that regard how do you answer the challenge of of using that same deck of cards to accompany um those different genres um uh so mostly i i've done at least in my games by uh, a combination of uh, tweaking the base mechanics slightly and then uh changes up to uh, changes to the uh Oh, combat and injury rules. Uh, I think that th those two things, those two tweaks go a long way. Um, for example, in uh, Shadows Over Soul, which is the uh, the science fiction horror game we have, uh, one of the w one of the ways the base mechanic is tweaked is in, in some of our other games. You know, after you've uh, in, in this case, if you've played a card or flipped off the top of the deck, and in the case of our system, you've, you've got that choice. Um, card from hand or top of the deck. You can then uh, sometimes some observers discard a card from hand to flip again, or otherwise it's, it's the equivalent of like the roll again of a lot of uh, mm -hmm. you know spend, uh, Benny the do stuff. Um, whereas in Shadows of Soul, you don't really have once once the cards hit the table, you don't have the option to change it. But in say for example against the Dark Yogi, which is our big damn hero game, uh, you could always discard a card from card. You could discard a card from your hand, uh, which is depleting your resource in that sense to to flip again, and it's. It gives you a bit more of a safety net for, uh, you know, if 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 the cards screw you, basically, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and then how you know how bad injury is and other consequences is another thing you can you can do to tweak the genre. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we we have a different sort of like wound system in Shadows of the Soul than we do in Against the Dark Yogi. And to co to further to further expound to further expound on that, I'd be. I'd like I'd like the rest of you to go into how you um, how you utilize that same deck of cards to emphasize the st the um, play style that you're a that you're aiming for with your respective projects. Uh, sure. Uh, so for me, a big key emphasis that I wanted was um, uh, teamwork was a big factor i wanted to play into this game uh it's about humble townsfolk rising up to become legends um and so at the beginning of the game you don't have many abilities or tools or things to to play with the the, the game is what you play with at the beginning of the game mm -hmm. um and so a key feature of that is that you're helping each other get more cards for the checks so people helping you give you more cards to turn over uh, using advantages in the situation gives you more time cards to turn over, and then you're you're lining up all these cards as um, as you, as you're making your checks. Then you flip them more, and then once players realize that what's going that's what is happening, what's going on in the game, they immediately start trying to help each other do things. It's like, oh, if I if I if you're trying to jump onto this beast back and I give you a leg up while you do it, that gives you an extra card, right? Yeah, that's what happens. Okay. Um, I want to hit him with my shield first before the, he does that. Okay, great. Then you get an extra card for that as well. There's all these three cards here. Um, and then when you fail, you gain a card to keep down, face down in front of you uh, that you also get to contribute to it. And then you line up all these cards and you flip them over. Um, and obviously, the more cards you flip, the more chances to get a court card. Mm -hmm. It means you're more likely to crit. And there are some checks that require crits. So it's just the, the moving of all the cards and the keeping them face down. And then you can keep cards between uh, like actions as well. Um, so I forgot what your question was now. Um, how do we use cards to emphasize the aspects of the game? I just remembered your question. Yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, the fact that there's there's the cards are so physical and you have them down in a face down state where you don't know what they are yet um, allows the, you to build up anticipation um, and allow you to see how much people working together is actually helping the action because you're stacking the odds in your favor um and uh so yeah i just went on a rambling thing yeah but that's that's basically um uh what it is it's just the, the seeing the, the physical action of taking cards from the deck keeping them and then handing them to your allies mm -hmm. uh when you're doing things really emphasizes the team aspect of the game yeah i got there in the end yeah um and what and what about you leo because Given, given, given the emphasis on words, there's a lot of um, a lot of net that can be cast with that. Hmm. Well, I guess with mine, it's always about choice, about deciding when to do things and how to do things, and knowing that your person isn't just a one-sided facet or something. 
that they have multitudes, that they are capable of doing a little bit of everything, but they've clearly got a stronger suit um, or stronger aspect that they want to play to. And I guess each card always represented to me one of their options, one of their perspectives of how they can act, how they can think, and as you get hit, as you take damage, um, you start losing options, as you start, as the wars start to close in, as the situation grows more dire, you start to know that, okay, I'm losing this X, Y, and Z card, that means I can't do X, Y, and Z type of actions. So they start focusing, and it means that in those dire situations, as the adrenaline's pumping, they're more likely to succeed. Mm -hmm. But maybe not in the way they expect it to. And that opens up a lot of dialogue and a, and a lot of um, interesting choices that come out come about from these situations where everyone's low on HP and suddenly um, the meek character is suddenly going out like arms flailing because that's all they have left. They, they Their brains... Their ideas, the plans, their words have started to fail them, and all they've got left are their fists. And sometimes it is just that surprising moment where they do come out on top because of that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's 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 a lot about choice and how choices change in different situations for me. Mm -hmm. Um, that was the core part of the game, and it really shows you that not everyone is two-dimensional they're not just one thing that there's more to them th than the words people give them there is more to them than um i guess the labels you assign to people mm -hmm. um now um mitch what about what about you given the given the um more macabre tones of necrobiotic <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think it worked out perfectly because um, our the game always starts with the first breath where you draw six cards from your deck and you get to look and see um, how your successes will be uh, throughout the day. Uh, and then as you start playing, you start to have to make decisions uh, almost like a, uh, a resource management game. Uh, about what's important to your character uh, and what uh, you're going to succeed at uh, and what's not important and what you're more willing to, to lose. Um, and so I think that worked perfectly for that macabre setting where uh, there's a push and pull uh, and sacrifice is a, a big thing. Mm -hmm. Now, given what you mentioned about resource management, that brings up something something else I think is worth discussing. Um, a lot... There is a bad habit among among gamers of all stripes to be a little bit conservative with a limited resource. Um, yeah. To put it to put it another way, oh, I can't I can't use one of my ninety nine mega potions. What if I need it for later? <laughs> like, we've all we've all had we've all had that tap. We've all been guilty of that at least once. So, um, though so, um. Don't don't even try, don't even try it don't even try to hide, um, but the, but there is that there is that tendency to hold to hold off on a limited resource and to, on for a for a rainy day that never comes. Um, have have any of you ha have any of you encountered that kind of thing in te in playtesting and how do you how do you address it? Yeah, so. In Legends of Valen, whenever you critically succeed or fail an action, you get what's called an edge, which I mentioned earlier. It's a face-down card you keep in front of you. And then you can add that to any other check that you make in the future. Um, and at the beginning of the game, you could you could stack them. You could have as many as you wanted, um, which then meant people didn't use them. because uh, until, until the key moment. They did always use, they usually save them up for a key moment and then cash them all in um, for like almost a guaranteed crit, basically. Um, but it ended up being that um, because uh, one person was getting was getting them and keeping them and then using them in one go, they'd get more. And they'd kind of like become a positive feedback loop. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, it became, uh, and people realized that you get them quite freely as well. Um, and the solution ended up being that you could just, you can't stack them. You can only have one. And then as players play, they realize they get them so often that when they'd get another one and they already have one, they're like, well, I could have used this already and I would have got another one back. 
and they soon learn that it's, it's, this is a thing that you go backwards and forwards on. You you cash it in and you get it back later. You cash it in and you get it back later, mm-hmm. and that that solved that really quickly for me. Um, and I guess that's yeah, that's the that's the card based resource that there is in the game. So yeah, that's what I'll come on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least in the at least in the games I've written, I found that uh, having a strong incentive to use it or lose it uh, mm, yeah. is a, a pretty good you know, way to go. Because uh, if 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 you know, for at least in the Saga Machine games, um, uh, uh, you get a hand of cards, and the, the cards in your hand are really kind of like a limited resource, right? Um, uh, and you uh, uh, they, they go away at the they go they go away at the end of the session. So at the very least, you've got this. You know, you could. If you know that your sessions, for example, run four hours, if you're a player, you can kind of look at the clock and be like, hey, I'm three hours into the session. I've used hardly any of them. Maybe I, I ought to start using them because uh, otherwise they're just going to go away at the end of the session and you, you draw a new, new hand at the beginning of next session. Um, and that, that's kind of a built-in you know, pressure to use them. You can kind of gauge what you're, you know, the amount of time you have, you're saving them over. Um, the other thing is uh, in our system, you know, when... You, uh, Joker comes out. That's one of the ways you refresh your hand. So you may get an unexpected, you know, unexpected influx of new cards up to your uh, up to your normal hand limit in that case. Um, uh, so uh, there's a, it's unpredictable when you're when you're when you're getting them back over the course of a session. So uh, that yeah, that's, adds, that's great. I was about yeah. to ask that exact question. How'd you get them back during the session? <laughs> yeah, that's good. So that's that, that's another way. You know, like. Uh, if, if, for example, you know you're drawing up to up to five, and you still got five cards in your hand. It's not gonna, that's not gonna really get you anything. But if you've, you know, played out at least a couple of them, then you're at least getting another couple cards back in that yeah. case. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, um, nice. that's another incentive to have them played throughout the course of the session. Now, that br- that brings me to oh before before I get before I get before I get into this because I, I feel I keep feeling like I I keep feeling like somebody didn't. Mitch, did you pit? Did you pitch out on this one? <laughs> no, I, uh, I didn't know if it was covered or not. Uh, but yeah, uh, for Necrobatic, um, I, I found because of the macabre nature, uh, usually when you roll, it's it's pretty like heavy stuff going on, mm-hmm. um, and and so if it's important to the character slash player, uh, they'll they'll play cards. Uh, otherwise, I, I feel like more times than not. Uh, people have been using their resources a lot and then start freaking out when they have no cards and have to just pull from the top of the deck, which is a, a fun experience for the whole table. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I haven't really had uh, much uh, uh, yeah. storing up the cards in, in Necrobotic. Yeah, I'm like, I'm very similar. Like, people are almost eager to use the resources in mind because they know that, at least when playing with me, um, failure is usually not a good thing. And it's usually in the case where I'm actually asking them to do checks for things that would seem like they'd put them in danger or there's like stakes to it. So I think it's about when you ask to make checks, because if they're making a simple check, they're not going to use the resources. But if it's something important to them, they're more than likely. And the fact that their choices get diminished every time I take a card from them, if I hit, if, if I damage their character, they're more inclined to use resources to prevent damage and to prevent them from losing out on options. So I, I guess it's it was just this nature of the game um, that I haven't encountered people hoarding resources because they know it's better to use it than lose it. Mm-hmm. Oh. And sen- and given that, I think it'd be ap- apropos to ad- to address the opposite end of things. Um, are any of you familiar with the term um, "going nova"? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, for th- Maybe so, need context for for the, for those unfamiliar. the The idea is in an encounter, somebody dumps all of all of their all of their major abilities, or tries to, or tries to do the, tries to get the most amount of of effects, um, from the from the get go. Um, sometimes sometimes if, if it in some games in the worst case scenario, this can result in your b bag getting cur- getting curb stomped in the first round. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, is, sorry. 
what I'm cur what I'm curious about is is if something like that has ever ha has ever happened in your experience when it comes to utilizing this setup and how and how and how you address that kind of thing. Um, well, it almost happens on a daily basis for me. Mm -hmm. um, just for the nature of how my game works, and Mitch can attest to it. That usually towards the end yep. of the session, um, towards the end of an arc, they just go all out because the car the players know that, you know, this is the last chance to do something crazy, and they they pull off like acts of God at that point in time, and it it makes the game all the more fun, because sometimes they they're not so much caring about the consequences of what's happening, and it it just plays out in the narrative, um, so it does happen on. A regular basis but usually there's enough risks that they don't do it for every single solution just the ones that they don't see an easy way out mm -hmm. and when it when given given the fact that given the fact that earlier there had been there had been jokes about um about that about dice screwing people over um of course of course as an aside, I should I will note that the that I consider Lady Luck to be a believer in true equality because it doesn't matter who it doesn't matter who or what you are she hates you. Um, mm -hmm. But have any of you ever encountered a a similar case of people of people just being horrifically unlucky when it comes to cards just as bad as dice? Uh, I I have a thing in my game that bugs me from. I don't know a game designer perspective that I can't get around, and and it's that. So as I mentioned before, you flip a card from the deck, and sometimes you have your edge, which you can add to the check as well, right? And it, it's up to you whether you want to do that or not. And if you add it in, then you have two cards to flip, and you flip them both, and you take the best, right? And say you're making a physical check, you're open for red cards. Uh, so you you have your card there, and the the players umming and ahhing should they use their edge or not, and then they do, and they flip the cards. And the card that they already had there was a red card, and the edge that they added themselves is a black card. And so then they now know that, oh, me adding my edge didn't actually help me. It wasn't necessary. I didn't ever need it, right? And, and they know that because they have hindsight, and they can now see the card. But I, and I know from a statistics point of view that you, because you, know, you can never know that. It's just the same as rolling a dice. And you having that extra card there did, in fact, help you. Uh, before you flip them, right? Mm. And it's only afterwards that you know that you didn't. And that sometimes it doesn't. I haven't really had the players like it really bug them or annoy them. But but you do have them get like a little comment like, oh, I didn't need that after all, and then they they just move on. But me as a game designer sitting in the background watching, I'm like, ah, oh, they had a negative experience there that really bothers me. Um, but I guess it's just the nature in that for some reason dice. Obviously, you roll them. And then you get a number, and then you forget about it, and you roll them again. You still blame the dice, but it wasn't like the dice was already set to that number, uh, even though you could do that. Um, but that's just something I found with cards that uh, have bothered me uh, when compared to dice. Yeah. Uh, just as a reminder about your system, um, yeah, the black cards are f like negative things, right? No, they're for or mental it... checks. So oh, if, okay, if you're so making a mental good. check, then you were hoping for black cards instead. Yeah. Okay, never mind. I was about to say, if it was like a negative positive thing, then you could say, oh, that means next time you know that you're not going to draw that type of card. So yeah, when they make yeah. that next move. Yeah, exactly. It's information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and with, and um, that that also that also brings the also brings the question of whenever whenever um, design is going on, so there's sometimes there's the instances of. Um, Right, of writing oneself into a corner, and the only way to get out is to hack off a limb. Proverbially <laughs> speaking, um, I don't want a, I don't want anybody to lose a limb anytime soon. Um, because um, cy um, unfortunately, cyber cybernetics isn't advanced isn't advanced enough at that level at that level yet. Um, <laughs> look, Mitch was probably gonna make some some joke about cybernetic limbs, so I wanted to head that off at the. Whoa, place. whoa, hold on, hey, hey, hey. It's not cyber. I mean, Necrobiotic is not cybernetic. It's just dead piece people's arms attached to your arms. It's fine, and that's doable. I can do that myself. <laughs> um, I'm concerned. A little bit there with that statement. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna get like police and uh, knocking on my door. 
like, hey, man, uh, what would you say on that uh, podcast there? It's right. Fine. <laughs> Look, there have there have been far far worse things said by by other people and my and myself in the history of this temple. Um, I'm just I'm just nipping that in the bud. Excellent. But what? But um, have were there any instances where there was where there was, where there was a certain idea that you wanted to implement, but either it either it didn't fit it didn't fit the gameplay style, or for for one reason or another, you just had to um. <laughs> Put, you just had to put it in the trash. Hmm. I Honestly, think yeah. things, but not related to the cards. I don't think. Yeah, like that, that happens all the time for me. Like, yeah. I probably throw away half of my ideas just because it didn't quite work. But uh, yeah, I mean, so yeah. Right. Right now, it's been the uh, the new archetype, which was uh, unlocked um, during the Kickstarter. Which everything else is is pretty mundane in uh, my game, but this new archetype has like the ability to work some miracles. And so, just trying to get that balanced out with the card system has been a challenge. And a lot of stuff has been thrown out and remade and such. Mm -hmm. So, it needs to be a challenge. I I, can, I don't I can see that. Sorry, you got you. I was I was just I was just saying I could see that. Uh, go ahead. Um, I don't think I've ever thrown anything out completely. I've always circled back and revamped or re-edited it so that it does fit in. Or I've completely ditched entire games because the core mechanic that I wanted didn't work. But it hasn't happened with deck building yet. Oh, actually, I did think of something. So there was something. It was um, so I, I mentioned earlier that I wanted my game to be the odds to be weighted around zero, mm -hmm. um, and in the final result of the game, you can't actually get a zero. Uh, you can only get a plus one or a minus one because you have one card, and if it's red, then it's plus. Oh, if you're looking for physical checks and it's red, it's plus one, and if it was black, it'd be minus one. So you can't actually get a zero, and that bothered me for a bunch of statistical reasons that I won't go into for for odds and things like that. And but I got there for happy reasons, and I I think Mitch could actually attest to this as well because he did a playthrough of my game on mm -hmm. um, uh, on Twitch once, and it, that was actually the genesis for this. It was originally the 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 check required two cards because then you could get zero, you could get a plus one and a minus one, right? And that's because I came from dice and I brought that into the system and went from there, um, and it was really bothering players because. You have two cards as your base check, and then you get more cards later on, right? Uh, for having extra advantages. But remembering that you always needed two cards was bothering people. And when Mitch did the playthrough with the people, and it was wonderful, and they, they did get it right, like when they were playing, but it still had some hiccups where it was like, do we need one card or two cards here? And I just thought to myself, no, this game needs to just have one. You just flip one card as the base check, and then I have to just forget about zero and these perfect statistics that i have in my spreadsheet here that need to be just right I need to forget that and just find a way to do it with one card and then the game's way better for it so that, that's one thing that's like a small thing i guess that um i had to kick out in the card mechanic um uh just uh tr i guess the making the numbers not what i wanted them to be for a better play experience uh, obviously everyone would be a test to that uh, being an important factor in game design, just streamlining, streamlining, yeah, streamlining. Mm -hmm. Now, with all, with all that said, um, what would you, what would you all say? What would you all say is, has been the biggest um, the biggest takeaway, or sometimes the harshest lesson, when it comes to developing RPGs that are using that are using a card based system instead of instead of a dice based one. I think for me, the biggest takeaway was that it wasn't as big a deal as I thought it would be. Not as in people, I thought people would be like, I like your game, but I'm not going to do anything with it because it uses cards. Um, mostly because uh, Twitter is a wonderful place. And sometimes you post things there and people just say, nope, it's only dice for me. And same on Reddit and these kind of like public forum places. Um, I got a lot of like negative responses there. Um, but then when it came down to it and meeting people in real life at conventions and things like that, um, and then doing the Kickstarter as well, it was 
almost completely positive. Oh, oh, I love cards. Oh, cards are great. Cards are beautiful. Um, those kind of comments, you know. Um, and I, I couldn't have known that before I did it. Uh, so yeah, that was the biggest takeaway to me was that it, it, it's it's not as maligned as as it looks like in in public discourse, I guess. Mm -hmm. Which which I I can see I can see that that's why I'm, that's why I made the joke about the about the fudge dice earlier. Um, hmm. um I what... guess it really falls. Oh, you go. Sorry. No, I I was finishing up. Oh, okay. Um. I guess it just means when you do this, you're not going to make everyone happy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. just in game design. It's impossible to make every single person happy. And if it's good enough for you, and if the game doesn't break on a regular basis, then <laughs> honestly, you've got a winner. You know, it just it's, it's all about then how you handle yourself in the social forum and how you share the game with other people. And that's really the crux of it. It doesn't really matter if it's dice or cards. It's just a game in the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for... Uh, so far in my local uh, game stores, none of them carry cards. Uh, <laughs> so when I want to run like an impromptu necrobotic game, I'm just kind of screwed. Uh, and so having to... Just like buying several decks of cards and just putting it in my car, uh, so I have that available at all times. I think that was the biggest thing for me, because uh, it, it was just like um, it feels like uh, game stores uh, just don't carry regular cards. Because you know, if you're uh, if you're in the game store, you're probably looking for something a little bit more complex than, uh, uh, or at least Thank more you. fantastical uh, than cards. Dude, I've got this entire yeah. big black suitcase just for Housling, so it's got all my decks of cards with the pre-gen oh. characters in it. And I just carry that around to conventions, and I'm like, lugging it through the crowds, and like, right. This is <laughs> oh, happening. that sounds awesome. I, I could I... probably pull off the big black suitcase, because every time I go to cons, I'm, wear I'm, wearing, a, I'm, wearing, a black, I'm wearing a black suit and vest, and a black tie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I uh, I want to do that, but I think uh, I I need like uh, a, a fleshy suitcase, like the Necronomicon. Um, oh my god! Yeah, I think that was just. Made. I know, right? Now I'm thinking about it. Uh, you're messing me up here. <laughs> um, I'm think I'm thinking about getting I'm thinking about getting a um pro a prop made so I can go so I can go around con I can go around conventions carrying the Holy Book of Grudges. <laughs> do it. Nice. Yeah. yeah, and just. Every every time somebody every time somebody annoys me or pisses me off or something, I can just write their name and that's a grudging. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. Or in, in some in some cases, I can, in some cases I can put it I can put it in whenever somebody makes one of those really one of those really the ev the jokes that are so bad that they do, that they're too bad to even count as dad jokes. <laughs> those are the best jokes. I call those. Oh uh, yeah, nice. yeah. Are you going to Gen Con? No. Um, uh, I'm so jealous of you guys and your conventions. All oh, my conventions got canceled. I'm yeah, so I'll be cool. at Gen Con and Origins and PAX this year. Um, though, like, I'll probably be in a hazmat suit. Um, unfortunately, they don't make hazmat suits in my size, so I'm so I'm <laughs> so. Not so nuts to that, um, no. But we'll I was. I, I already got. I already got my. Con, I already got my convention fixed down, down in down in Texas last month. So I'm go, so I'm good on that front. Nice. And the only other one I'm. The only one I might go to is, um, Twin is Twin Cities Con in October. Also nice. Um. I'm just flipping a coin between do I do I go do I go to that or do I or or because um. It was, because a week ago I found out Dream Theater is going to be, um, going to be touring in Minneapolis later this year. So Ooh, it's a case of Dream Theater. <laughs> it's a, it's a case of decisions, decisions. Do I do, do I do, yeah. do I do Twin Cities Con or do I go to the State Theater? Dream Theater, like you know, I feel like they're not. I don't, I don't know how old they are, but they, they got to be tired. Um, <laughs> um. They've been they've been around for they've been around for a while, but um, mm -hmm. um and then to, then to make matters worse, I find out Sabaton's also had also heading into my area. So 
Yeah, j- yeah, just have me spinning plates, why don't you? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what, like, oh, jeez. Especially now, because, you know, we're all trying to get out uh, and do stuff uh, just because we've been, like, indoors for forever. And we probably will be indoors for a long time still. Uh, but it's just like, ah. Uh, I'm, anyway. I'm, I live out in the, I live out in the middle, I live, I am surrounded by forest where I am, so, um, the worst thing that I have to deal with is getting assaulted by geese or turkeys. Oh, that sounds horrific. I'm in Baltimore, and I feel like you're in a tougher neighborhood than me. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, well, one, one of my, one of my, it could be worse, I could be in D.C., um, one of my colleagues. <laughs> I used to live there. <laughs> One of my co- one of my colleagues is one of the uh, one of my colleagues the um, good brother Doku is it is in that area and he's when we were going through the rudest sit when we were going through the rudest cities in America which New York won out because of course they did um, we um, he had he had said that he had he had jokingly said that the nicest people in DC are the gangbangers because they just want to sell you weed <laughs> yeah it's uh yeah, it's probably true I mean yeah like. I much prefer the 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 people uh, on the street trying to take your money than uh, the the big CEOs and the politicians and such. Yeah. Like holy hell. Uh, but with but with all that said, I do I do want to give my sincere thanks to all of you for being willing to come back to the temple and um and and put up and put up with all the t- all the time zone chicanery when it came to even setting the whole thing up. Um, oh. Our pleasure, anytime. I think we're able to stay on here for like several hours and stay up. Yeah, yeah I got five more minutes in me. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh, I, I know, but well, I, well, I have a reputation as being the marathon man, but I, but I know that not everybody can um not everybody can do that, especially given the time differences. Um, but. Of course, any of course, anytime you any time you guys are are op- are open to coming back, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Hell yeah! Yeah, I'm just really pleased that all these card games are out now. <laughs> I know. Is, I, I I'm very <laughs> happy that uh, I've played or ran uh, every game uh, that's represented here. Um, nice. And and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody.